Hello, today I'm going to go over ocean currents um, and we're just going to cover some of the basics of ocean currents. We're going to link it to some of the other things that we've been talking about. So this first image shows some of the different currents that we see. Uh, these are the major currents we find in the ocean. Um, these are currents that are up near the top of the water column. So these are surface currents. And we see some different color ones like Gulf Stream is red because that's a warm current. The California current is blue because that's a cold current. Um, and these are gonna have effect on um, lots of different things. So ocean currents move in large predictable patterns. Like we always see these currents moving in the same directions. Surface currents affect weather, climate, and human endeavors such as shipping. So weather and climate are affected regularly by these ocean currents. But so it's just about anything that we do um, as humans that involve any kind of travel or moving things around the globe. Um, shipping is just one example. And it was actually before our modern world the currents were used to safely or more quickly get across from Europe to America. You can see if they come down through this canary current and then across, it was easier to go with the current going from Europe to North America this way, and then vice versa coming back. So surface currents are primarily caused by global wind currents. So we have these huge masses of air that blow in regular directions and those wind currents will actually push the water. It's just like if you're blowing on the surface of a bowl of soup or a cup of coffee. That's what the wind, cur the wind um, currents are doing. They're blowing across the surface of the ocean and pushing that water. Winds are caused by the sun because the sun heats up the earth uh, to different amounts and causes movement of air from one area to another. All right, let's continue. So we said that um, the uh, atmosphere and the wind in the atmosphere causes a lot of these surface currents, but also there's something called the Coriolis effect. And without getting too deep into it, the Coriolis effect has to do with the rotation of the earth and it causes spinning. It causes like these um, uh, masses of air or ocean to spin in certain directions. So Coriolis effect also cause surface currents to move in a specific way. And we see that here, the directions, depending on whether you're in the Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere. This involves the rotation of the Earth on its axis. All right, now what about water movement from top to bottom? So how does water move from the surface layers which are in many ways separated from the bottom layers. There's not a lot of mixing between the two. Well, if you see this image, we can see some cold water and what happens with the cold water. It gets more dense and it sinks. So water temperature can cause water to move up or down in the ocean. Warm water will rise, cooler water will sink. Cold water is dense and sinks. So you'd see this around um, the poles, right? Or around Greenland, Antarctica, those kind of areas. Okay. Now there's something in this picture here, there's something called the global conveyor belt. This is a very slow movement of water as it goes from being surface water on the top, warmer, to sinking down to the depths of the ocean and flowing along the bottom of the ocean. And then it comes up in a couple of different places, Indian Ocean and in the Pacific. Um, so this is, a, this is like on the order of hundreds of years this water takes to cycle through this very slow mixing of surface and deep water. The global conveyor belt is a slow current that connects the surface waters and the deepest ocean waters. And then here what we have is we have California. This is uh, the United States. We've got California here and then goes down into Mexico. 
But what I want to show you is this is San Francisco area. This is LA area and San Diego. Um, and we're going to take a look at something here. Um, ocean currents are strongly linked to climate. Now, if you notice, the California current is cold and it comes down the coast here and it travels this way. It's that cold current that gives San Francisco its cold Mediterranean climate. All right, it's almost exclusively from this cold current coming down that really influences San Francisco's climate. But as you get further down into LA, San Diego, and Mexico, that current loses a lot of its strength and it kind of swirls in here and warms up. So they have a different climate. They have warmer temperatures based on this water that heats up more than the water off the Northern California coast. Uh, the California Current is a good example of this phenomenon. Okay, I hope this helps. Thank you very much.